Welcome to Getting Started with PointWise. In this video I'm going to be taking you through some of the terminology as well as the grid generation process. But even more important than that I'm just going to get you past the blank screen. You know, you as a user are concerned with what steps do I need to take to get past the blank screen and that's what this video is here to address. So the first thing I'm going to do is import some CAD geometry. Now you can create geometry in our software and you can even make grids without any geometry at all. But for the most part you'll probably just be importing geometry from some CAD software, which is exactly what I've done here. So I've got the Anaka airfoil that I've just imported. Now the first term I want to introduce is our terminology for geometry, which is called a database. So if you look over here in the list panel you can see I've got four database entities that make up this airfoil. These are database curves. So before I move on, I want to talk a little bit about scene manipulation. Here in the display window, this is where you're going to be creating entities, modifying entities, so efficiently manipulating the scene is crucial to generating your grid. So the first thing is panning. How do I pan around the scene? Well, if you hold down the shift key and the right mouse button, you can pan around the scene pretty easily. Zooming in and zooming out is accomplished using the scroll wheel. So I can zoom in and zoom out with the scroll wheel. And if I put my mouse on the leading edge of this, this airfoil, I can zoom in and zoom out, and it actually zooms to the location of my cursor. Now if I'm way out here, you're like, well, maybe I don't want to zoom all the way back in using the scroll wheel. What's a better way of doing this? Well, you can use a zoom box. So if I hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button and just drag downward, you'll see there's a magnifying glass with a plus symbol. That's just letting you know that you're zooming in. Similarly, if I hold down the shift key and drag up while pushing the middle mouse button, I get a magnifying glass with a little minus sign, and that's just letting you know that you're zooming out. To reset the display, I can just hit Control R, and if I want to take all the entities in the scene and just fit them to the window, I can hit F2, and it'll do that. So I'm just going to reset the display here. All right, the next step is creating grid curves on the database entities. Now, in point wise, we have this noun verb paradigm way of doing things, meaning I select an object, the noun, and I apply some action, the verb. So I'm going to select the database entities and put some grid curves on them. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to the toolbar. And I've got you notice that, that we have a toolbar running along the side and the top. These toolbars are completely customizable and actually the majority of the commands that you'll be using to generate grids in our software are directly accessible from the toolbar. So in the mask panel I'm going to just check on the database mask. So a mask is a way of doing very targeted selection. We have several different entity types in PointWise and all of them can live in the display at the same time. So being able to select individual entities is also crucial to efficiently creating grids. So by turning on the database mask, it's only going to allow me to select database entities. So I'm just going to select all the database entities for the airfoil. You'll notice I did that using a selection box. I can also use control A, which is the hotkey for select all, and I can select all the entities that way. And I can even come over to the list panel and select entities that way. So there's various ways of doing selection in our software. So I've got all the database entities selected. I'm just going to set up some defaults for my grid curves. And I'm going to put some grid curves on the geometry. And you'll notice that these light green grid curves were created on the database entities. And they have begin points and end points. And those are called nodes. And in our software, a grid curve is called a connector. So here in the list panel, you'll notice I've got four connectors. And they're on the database entities. Now by default, the internal grid points are not rendered in the display. But I can just select the connector mask just pick all my connectors and I can turn those points on so you can see them in the display window. Now the number of points on a given connector is referred to that connector's dimension. So if we look in the list panel you'll notice that all the connectors have a very specific dimension. So after the connectors have been created and dimensioned, the next thing is distributing them properly, resolving the geometry. So I need to resolve the curvature of the leading edge as well as the small trailing edge feature. So to do that, I'm going to use another entity type, which is more or less just a sub-entity of a connector, and it's called a spacing constraint. Now, spacing constraints exist at the beginning and end points of a connector. So I'm just going to select the spacing constraints at the beginning and end points of these connectors. I'm going to adjust their spacing value. I'm going to decrease it to pull points towards the leading and trailing edge of this geometry. You can say, well, 
you know, maybe at the leading edge it's a little bit too fine. So I can just select those and I can increase that value as well until I get the perfect distribution for my problem. So the grid curves are on there. They're dimensioned and distributed properly. The next step is creating a computational domain. This is going to be a 2D simulation and the easiest way to do this is extruding away from the connectors. So to do that I'm going to select the connectors. I'm going to come up to our menu bar our menu bar has more advanced commands and it's also got uh, additional options for a lot of the commands that exist on the toolbar. So I'm just going to come to extrude normal. Obviously the first thing I need to do is flip the orientation so we're marching away from the airfoil. I'm going to set up the initial cell height in the boundary layer region and a custom growth rate. I'm just going to run this 50 steps and you'll notice that next to the run button there's this little yellow lightning bolt and that just lets you know that you can hit control F to run the extrusion instead of just clicking the button it's a hotkey and it exists in various places in our software I'm just going to hit control F run that extrusion I can hit F2 to resize it to fit it to the scene and you'll notice some additional connectors were created we got a branch connector and the far field connector but we've also created this two-dimensional surface mesh which we call a domain. So in the list panel you can see it's a structured domain. We can create both structured and unstructured domains in our software and it consists of quad elements. Now before I move on I want to talk a little bit more about selecting entities and highlighting them in the display window like I'm doing here with this connector. If you look just below the message window right here you'll notice when I mouse over a connector it highlights in the display window and it gives me some additional information. Just below the message window it says CON-6, which is the name of the connector that I'm highlighting, as well as 87, which is the dimension of that connector. And this occurs for every entity that I hover over, as long as its mask is selected. This is going to become important later on when we're setting boundary conditions, and I'll show you. So for some solvers we would be done, but there are other, other solvers that even though this is a 2D calculation, they want it extruded into the third dimension just one cell deep, so that's exactly what we're going to do to introduce another entity type in point wise. But before I do that I want to rotate the scene so we can see the extrusion happening in real time. To do a rotation I can hold down the control key and the right mouse button and just kind of drag and it will rotate the display. And it's actually going to rotate about the red XYZ axis. That's the center point for rotation. And it can be moved to any pickable point in the display window. So now that it's been rotated I'm just going to select the domain I'm going to create a translational extrusion. I'm going to use the z-axis. I'm just going to run it one step. And you'll notice in doing that we've created another entity type which is a volume mesh and in point wise we call that a block. Again this is a structured block and it consists of hex elements. So I'll just reset the display. At this point we're done. We've generated our grid, we've got our computational domain, so now would be a great time to save our project. So I'm just going to hit save up here, type in a name, save it, and we're good. So the remainder of the time is going to be sent, set, spent setting up the solver and the boundary conditions. So to do that we're going to be spending the remainder of our time here in the CAE menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the solver. I'll select open foam, and I'm going to set my boundary conditions. So there's three different boundary conditions we're going to be setting. The first one is the airfoil. So this is going to be a wall type boundary condition. Next, those of you familiar with open foam know that because this is a 2D simulation and we've got a 3D grid, we've got to set that front and back domain to a type empty. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a boundary condition empty type and then the last one is the far field and this is just going to be the generic patch alright so after I've done that I need to actually select the domains and assign them to the boundary conditions I've just created when I open the boundary condition panel all the domains are initially in this unspecified BC and so that's where I've got to select them and assign them to the specific boundary condition that I've created so I'm just going to zoom in here and rotate what I want to do is I want to select all the surface domains for the airfoil and drop them into that boundary condition but you can see there's quite a lot going on in the display so the easiest way to do it is using inclusive selection so if I hold down the shift key and draw a selection box around the airfoils it's going to select only those entities that are enclosed within that selection box Then I can drop them into that airfoil boundary condition 
Next, the front and back domains. So again, you remember I mentioned that some additional information for the entities I've got highlighted is just below the message window. So if I bring my mouse over one of these front and back domains, you'll notice that my mouse has become this multi-cursor. And that's just an indication to you that there are multiple entities that lie beneath my cursor. And to toggle between them, I can do so using the space bar. So if you look below the message window, you can see it says DOM-9. I hit the space bar, it says DOM-1. And if you notice, DOM-9 is in bold, meaning that one is selected. So this lets you know which entity you're currently highlighting. So I'm just going to select both those domains and drop them into that boundary condition. Now the last one is the far field, and you'll notice it's actually the last domain in this unspecified BC. So rather than setting it up in the display window, picking it in the display window, I can just click this button, Add to Selection. You notice it adds it to the current selection, and I can drop it into that far field boundary condition. At this point, we're done. We've set up the solver, we've got the boundary condition set. Again, would be a great time to save, so I can do so just hitting Control S, the hotkey for save and I can select my computational domain, in this case the block, and go File, Export, CAE, and export it to the solver. So with that, we're, we're done. Uh, this was just an introduction to PointWise. Again, just getting you familiar with our terminology as well as the grid generation process, but more importantly, answering that question, what do I need to do to get past the blank screen when I open up PointWise? So thank you very much.